Hello and a big welcome back to all my subscribers and if you're not a subscriber, why not? Right, today uh, I'm doing another section of the sort of beginner RISC-V assembly language programming. Today I want to talk about assembly language instructions uh, and some of the more common ones that um, are used. So let's just get straight into it. Let me just share my desktop here. So this is my RISC-V machine. Uh, uh, this is, as usual, the standard make file. And all we're doing is we are compiling it uh, with the correct RISC uh, architecture information. And then we're just compiling all of the source code. So if we look at the source code for this, um, maths.s, we have the section uh, text, which is indicates that it's the uh, code version, global main to say that main is a global function. And then we have some arithmetic operations or now, first we just load numbers into the registers, then we do add, subtract, multiply, divide, uh, get the remainder, and uh, we do some logical operations. So, um, where we load hexadecimal numbers, and then we do and, or, xor, uh, and xor immediate, and then some shift operations. So we load some more numbers, and then we shift uh, left and we load some more and we shift right so uh, and then there's the basic exit call down here which is the e call to exit that's a very simple program it doesn't actually output anything uh, so if we want to see it uh, then we have to run it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the debugger inside of Emacs so that we can see the source code inside. So to do this in Emacs, you just run the meta command and GDB. It will run the maths program. Now we want to break on main. So I can type out break if you're not familiar with GDB, but I can use the abbreviation B um, in the main function. It sets the breakpoint and then we can just do run. So you'll see that below it is showing us the line that we're on for the first line after the break. So if we step over that, step over that, and step over that, then we can do info registers and then do A0, A1, A2. And it'll show us the ones that we just loaded. Oh. Now you can just use I space R A0 A1 A2. So you can use the shortcuts here as well. You don't have to type out info registers. So this shows us that we've loaded 10, 4, and 5 into A0, A1, A2, respectively. So now if we step into the next program, the next bit, we can do add. And what we can do is we do IR um, A0, A1. So these are the two numbers that we added. And T0, the temporary register, and look at the results. So you can see that we added 10 and 4 and we got 14. So we can step into the next one. We can do IR and then we do A0, A1 and T1. And you can see that we've subtracted 4 from 10. And we step on to the next one and IR <coughs> Uh, and we should multiply A0 by A1, and the result goes into T2. Notice I'm not putting any commas here in the GDB. Uh, you just list the registers. So 10 times 4, 40. 
step to the next one, uh, which was the division, and we do IR, and then we do A0, A1, T3, and you can see we've done the division here. Um, so we're dividing A0 by A1, and we get 2. Now, this doesn't do floating point operations, so you're going to get an integer. So just remember that when you're doing these sorts of multiplication and division, you're actually not going to get a floating point number, you're going to get an integer. Um, so if we step into the next one, we're doing basically the same division again, right? But this time we're going to get the remainder of the division. So we can do A0, uh, A1, and this time T4, and this gives us the remainder. And we can step into the next one and we can use T5 here. So this works as a modulus operator. It'll show you the remainder. Um, so you can use this when you're doing operations to say, um, you know, if this is divisible by four, then do one thing, otherwise do something else. So these sort of if conditions that you would get in a C program, th this is sort of how you would do it here. You're, it's basically the same thing. Um, this time I'm just going to show you T5 and we can see there's zero. Now, so uh, if we step into the next one, logical operations, we're just going to load into S1 and S2. So just to show you that we did load into S1 and S2. Um, so the hexadecimal number F0 is the decimal number 240 and F is just 15. So um, the GDB shows you both the hexadecimal number and the um, decimal number. So if we step and we do an AND, so we're saying here S1 and S2, and we can see the result in S3. And an OR, and this will be in uh, S4. So S4 was S1 or S2. And then we have XOR. And this will show up in register S5, 255. And we do, oh, we need to step into it once. And we now can do see what the XOR immediate is. Uh, so I, R, and the result is stored in S6. So the XOR, or XOR intermediate, uh, uh, S6 is not S2, right? So that's A5 or 165. So we load uh, T4 with an immediate value. So we can see in T4 the value of one. And we are going to shift T, f um, we're going to shift by A1. Okay, <laughs> let's just look at all of these and you'll see what I mean. So if we do IR T, uh, A1, T4 and T5. So A1 was four. T4, I'm oh, sorry, A1 was four. T4 was one. Uh, and then we shifted the result into T5. Now, when you do a shift left, what you're basically doing is multiplication. Um, so what, what you can see here is that we've effectively shifted the one over one here. So if you can imagine the normal display of this would be, you know, um, 
if this was binary, this would be seven zeros and a one. Here there would be six zeros, a one, and then another zero. So basically what we've done is we've shifted in to the left, we've shifted in an extra zero. So we've effectively moved this number over to the left, which is in effect multiplication. Okay, um, so we have upped it by one decimal point. Um, now, if we now load into L5 the number two, um, and we can see um, doo -doo -doo, L5, uh, sorry, T5, the number two is in there. And this time we're gonna shift right. So we're gonna do a logical shift right. Um, so let's look at A1, T5, and then the result, which is in T6. Now, shift right is actually division, really. Um, so if shift left is a, is a multiplication, then shift, left, uh, shift right is a division. And, and then we can just um, continue and get to the end. But that is it for today. That is just um, very simple instructions that you can use um, for mathematical operations. Now later we'll talk about some other um, possibly more interesting operators. But if you go to the risk.org, risk5.org website, there is a PDF there and you can look through all of the um, multi multiplication divisions uh, and integer instruction sets, right? So addition, uh, multiplication, division, all of this is in here. And you can read up on this and, and look at in greater detail. Uh, it explains in much more detail than I'm able to do in a video. And you can see all of the register functions, or sorry, the, the instructions that I just showed you for addition, subtraction, shift left, shift right. And so arithmetic, arithmetic right shifts, etc. So all of these are explained in, in much more detail and it's really, really worth going and having a look at the actual manual uh, when you're gonna do some of this stuff because um, I've only just showed you a really small sample of the instruction sets for mathematics, but there are many, many, many more that you can look at. So it's all here in the risk5.org website. So just go here and you can do a search and you know, there is uh, um, lots and lots of information, the specification, um, just pretty much everything. Um, but you can get the uh, courses, all of this sort of stuff is on the website. So have a look at their website. It's well worth uh, going to. Now, uh, this is just a really short video. I'm hoping that you're enjoying the series. I'm going to cover more instructions as we go, and I'm going to try and get into showing you how to do a loops, uh, like um, a for loop, an if loop, that sort of thing, but in assembly language rather than in a in a higher level language like C. Um, these are all of these sort of constructs are possible in assembly. They're just slightly different way of doing it. Uh, using labels and things. So if you're learning something, please, please push the like button. Um, let me know that you like this sort of stuff. I'll keep trying to output these types of videos. Um, and that's it for me today. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.